you win no matter what the market does, okay? Prices go up. That means there was a lot of activity, not a lot of inventory, a lot of transactions. You win. You know, we're going to have 4 million transactions this year. We had 4 million transactions in 2008. This is 2008. This is it. Pick your poison, right? How are you going to talk to more people in the market that you've never talked to before, create a great first impression, and then what system on the back end are you going to put in place to never allow anyone to ever forget that great first impression? But we do know this. A healthy market in the U.S. is about 5 million transactions. We will get back to 5 million transactions, and it's going to be a violent resurgence. Um, people talk about the market crashing, prices coming down, oh no, where they didn't really have a massive business in the first place, and they're still building, and it's just, you know, it's easy to continue building no matter what the market's doing. You don't lay down with the market. A lot of you are laying down with the market saying, what's the point? Well, the point is you're building a career. It doesn't matter about today or 2024, or 2023. We're looking at 2026, 7, 8. Good, good. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm doing great. Great. How's everybody else doing? Doing awesome. We, we, we actually got a lot more people than expected um, that showed up for, for, um, for the Zoom today. So I wanted to thank you in advance for carving out some time to speak to us. Uh, we... Um, we definitely have questions. You know, I, I know initially when we set this up, I, I asked you to to go through um, one of your Zooms that I really found of, of value, you know, um, uh, what to do when sellers don't want to sell. Uh, I've watched a lot of your content and connecting yeah. with you on social, to, um, you know, I'm on your email distribution and I know we haven't really spoken in person, but I wanted to, you know, share your insights and all your all the knowledge you have with the rest of um, United Real Estate. You know, we um, we're, we're a growing company. We're a large company. And we, uh, you know, we think that, um, you know, we could all uh, work together. So um, we have uh, about 30 people here today. Uh, we're, we, as you know, we are recording this as you are. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll let you give you your introductions and go through, um, you know, your um, presentation. And we'll, you know, have questions. We can talk about all the other stuff that's going on if, there's, if time for, uh, permits. Absolutely. Um, where, where are you guys located? So we're, we're in uh, North, North New Jersey and Bergen County. So we're okay. Uh, North minutes. New Jersey. Got it. Yeah, got it. Got it. Outside cool. of New York city, um, near the George Washington bridge. Got uh, we it. have offices all throughout um, the area, uh, five offices throughout the area. So we cover um, here. Now we have a new office in New York in um, Putnam Dutchess County area. So we're, we're expanding and, you know, we're, uh, definitely looking to grow even further. So that's beautiful, beautiful yeah. show. Show of hands, how many people are already following me online somewhere? Okay, cool. Most everybody. Just for the rest of you, and my voice is a little bit <laughs> messed up. I went to Vegas last week, and uh, I don't drink or gamble, but um, I did a speech. I was I was a little under the weather, and then I did a speech where I screamed. Okay, so just a little background. I got in real estate in two thousand two. Okay, if you can imagine that far back, um, there was no social media, Zillow, you know, iPhone wasn't even there, YouTube, no, nothing was invented yet. Um, and I got in in 2002, and that was right before the market really just exploded, a lot like what happened in 2021. And I know a lot of you are familiar with that. So it was a very similar market. 2021 was actually a little crazier, in my opinion. Of course, that was a long time ago. So, it's kind of hard to remember the exact intensity, but it was just very similar, you know, low inventory, um, you know, multiple offers, you know, more than asking price, you know, and it lasted a good year and a half, just like this last uh, market swing did. And uh, <clears throat> I got caught up in that. I was, I was in my late or my early twenties and made a million bucks really fast. And then I lost it all <laughs> because I started flipping houses and, you know, all this stuff and uh, lost everything in the crash, went back to roofing houses, worked on the oil rig and just long story short, because I want to get into some Q and a, I think that's where the, most of the value is going to be here today. But I got back in real estate in 2008 and I took everything I learned. Right. And what did I learn? I learned that you got to build relationships in this business. Um, in, in the first part of my career, I was just doing deals and the client was going that direction and I was going this direction. There was no need for either of us. That client wasn't going to buy back into an overinflated market. 
and I could just call 10 more people, 10 more property owners and find somebody that wanted to make 200,000 a day. So I didn't really need them and they didn't really want me. Um, so I didn't understand how the business was actually built. I understood how to do deals and close deals and make money, but I didn't know really how to build a career. And I think that's the punchline is that we were so focused on 2023 and, and now we're getting into focused on maybe a little bit of 2024. I think some of you are still focused on 2023. Hell, 2023 has been over. And what, what you're doing right this second, really starting a couple of weeks ago, is really all for 2024. I mean, if you may get something happen, you know, I mean, have some closings in, you know, November, December, sure. But those closings were, you know, from work that you did back in June and July, more than likely. Um, So I, I what did I learn? OK, so I learned that you got to build relationships. I learned that closings happen every day regardless. And I learned that business is unlimited. Competition doesn't exist at all. The, the only competition is right there in the mirror. Um, there's unlimited opportunity for every single one of you to do as many deals as you want. All right. The only way you're going to get to a million dollars a year, okay, is not from, you know, figuring out how to close more leads or figuring out how to convert better. Okay. Converting better makes you money this year. Um, if you're only focused on converting and closing deals, you know, you, you may or may not have a great year this year, but again, this is your, the only way to make a million bucks is to create a snowball of people, right? A large mass of people in your market that know who you are and continue to remember who you are. That's the only way is to accumulate relationships and keep those relationships ongoing. Most agents, you know, if somebody's not interested today, they would disregard them. You know, they only want to focus on people who are motivated to do something now. That's a huge mistake because there's probably only about 5% of people who really actually do something now out of the people you talk to. Well, there's 95% of people who will do stuff later that you're throwing away. So you're only capitalizing on 5% of the possible business over the course of your career. We have to get into this. You know, I want to I want to gather everyone, whether they want to buy or sell or not, into my ecosystem. That's how you build a massive business and have a great career. So I had to, you know, go through learning, learning this through losing everything, going bankrupt. I was sleeping in my car, sleeping on friends' couches. I was eating out of people's refrigerators, you know, all that good stuff. And um, roofing houses, serving tables, worked on the oil rig for a year. But I got back into 2008 and guess what? <laughs> it was the easiest time to sell real estate. Uh, everything was half off and there were listings everywhere. Um, people talk about the market crashing, prices coming down. Oh no. Um, inventory shooting through the roof. You know, this whole thing's going to reverse. And <clears throat> instead of no inventory, we're going to have too much and prices are going to come down. Great. That would be incredible for us as real estate agents in the industry. I hope you realize that um, a lot of people see that and, and, and that, and it, you know, that, that, they have, that it makes fear, creates fear. You shouldn't be scared of anything. You win no matter what the market does. Okay. Prices go up. That means there was a lot of activity, not a lot of inventory, a lot of transactions. You win. If prices go down, prices now are cheaper. How, okay. Raise uh, show of hands. How many of you have a buyer? Who, who's waiting on prices to go down. <laughs> you know. Okay. Okay. Pro pro probably a long list of people who are waiting on prices to go down. So, okay. If in fact the market crashes in terms of prices, your business is going to explode. Now, some of the people on that list, whatever caused prices to go down is going to scare them. They're not going to buy anymore. But a lot of people on that list will buy. I'll tell you who buy and sell no matter what the market's doing, and that's investors. You need to build a massive list of like these small-time investors, okay, that are just buying and selling all the time, little rental properties, apartment complexes, um, you know, fourplexes, duplexes, commercial stuff. They buy and sell no matter what the market's doing. The market, I, I'm an investor. I'm, I'm buying. I've, I've bought five, six, seven. I bought seven properties in the last three months. 
prices are all time highs right now. If prices go up, guess what? I'm still buying. If prices go down, guess what? I'm still buying. There's always going to be deals no matter what the market's doing. So I had to learn all that. I came back. I crushed it. I got to where I was selling 100 properties a year. I did that for eight years in a row from 14 to 2021. And then early 2022, I stepped out of production just to go all in on this, helping you guys crush it. I got into coaching in 2017. I became the world's first completely free coach. Um, and the the mission statement was to reduce the failure rate in the industry one agent at a time, which I've done in a massive way. I get messages all the time from you guys saying, I would have quit or I wouldn't be in the business anymore if it wasn't for you. So we know we're accomplishing that goal. I don't know. <clears throat> I, I could ramble about so many things. It's, 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 it's insane. So I don't want to like go in all kinds of different directions here. Um, and we don't have a lot of time. I've got about 30, 40 minutes to really spend with you. So let's get into some Q and a, cause that's really going to be where, you know, where I can really probably, probably provide the most value, really digging into what you guys are having problems with and um, you know, what you're running into. Hey, what's up, Ricky? Uh, Randy Williams, managing partner from the uh, Edgewater office. Um, I was working on wall street in 2008 when the crash happened um, in the financial sector. And I see some of the same, um, I guess, financials and implications about where things are kind of going. I'm not saying it's going to be as severe as 2008, but what I would like to do is maybe expand upon your experience that you've learned from in 2008. And I would like you to share maybe some of the top three things that you think agents should do to prepare for this market reset that can set them up for success. Because people that went through the crash in 2008, like myself, like yourself, um, we know what's coming and we know that there's going to be ample opportunity for you to really uh, capture more market share as agents, as real estate professionals. So I'd just like you to shed some light on that part. Well, what do you think is going to happen? And what do you see? What do you, what, what are you seeing in the data that's uh, causing the concern? Well, I wouldn't say necessarily concern um, because like I said, I've, I've been through the crash in 2008, which I think is going to be a lot more severe than this reset, but I'm seeing that obviously um, there's, uh, not enough homes on the market still, right? Mm -hmm. Which is an interesting space because every property that we put up for sale in North Jersey, we're still having multiple bids, but interest rates are relatively high. And then we have a large group of buyers that are not pulling the trigger to purchase properties as well. So yeah. we're in a kind of a weird space. So yeah. being that this is probably uncharted territory for most of us, I would like to know what you think agents should be doing to move forward and put themselves in a position to not only survive, but thrive. Well, it doesn't change from what you what you should have been doing last year or 2021 or next year. You see, the market's different every single year. Was the market conditions the same in 2017 to 18 to 19 to 20 when COVID hit to 21 when the market was blowing up to 22 when rates started going up on and on and on? You know, we're going to have four million transactions this year. We had four million transactions in 2008. This is 2008. This is it. We're, 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 we're literally to rock bottom right now in terms of buyers. It's only the people that need to, I'm sure you guys would agree. Only people that either need to buy and sell. They're not just doing it because they want to. Okay. I want 8% rates because I want to, they're doing it because they need to. Uh, we have a lot more cash buyers than we normally have. Um, we have more people buying new construction than we normally do because they're offering incentives and, and buy downs and all this. Um, it's only people that need to and investors. That's the only people doing deals right this second. This is rock bottom. This is it. Um, if you're keeping your head above water right this second, then hallelujah, you've made it. Now you have to understand how to take advantage of this opportunity to build your career. And how do you do that? What does that mean? It means more people in the market that know who you are and never forget who you are. How do we do that? Talk to more people in the market, get to know them, <laughs> let them know who you are, and then have a system in place where they never forget who you are. It's real simple stuff. So, you know, there's cold calling, there's social media, there's door knocking, there's direct mail, there's, you know, meet people in public. There, pick your poison, right? How are you going to talk to more people in the market that you've never talked to before, create a great first impression, and then what system on the back end are you going to put in place to never allow anyone to ever forget that great first impression? It's real simple stuff. And so what happens is that, as we have 4 million transactions this year, okay, and the next year, who knows what we'll have? Will it be lower? Will it be higher? Could go either way. 
a lot of uncertainties with rates and wars and uh, you know elections. Who knows? But we do know this. A healthy market in the U.S. is about 5 million transactions. We will get back to 5 million transactions, and it's going to be a violent resurgence. In 2000, uh, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I did all right. I got I got up to about 200,000, something like that. But then 2014 was the year I sold 100 properties for the first year. Now, did I do anything different from 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14? No. I made my calls. I did my direct mail. I did my weekly email. What happened was that at that point, a snowball had built of people that know who I am in the market and a combination of the market resurging. So th this is what happens in markets. When the market retracts like it's done and it went from 6 million to 5 million to 4 million transactions, you Right now, we're down 20% last year, right? Number of transactions in the country. I don't know about your local market. In the country. And you talk to agents. Some agents are up on the year, right? Not very many, but some agents are actually up. Most of those agents are still in the building stages of their career where they didn't really have a massive business in the first place. And they're still building. And it's just, you know, it's easy to continue building no matter what the market's doing. If you don't lay down with the market, a lot of you are laying down with the market saying, what's the point? Well, the point is you're building a career. doesn't matter about today or 2024, 2023. We're looking at 2026, 7, 8. In 2027, let's say, okay, when we get there, are you going to be thinking about, you know, how much money you made in 2024? Are you going to care? Or are you going to be more worried about what you're making in 2027, the current year? The current year. You're going to be thinking about that year, but that year is going to be determined, <laughs> crazy as it sounds, based on what you do now in 2024 and 25 and kind of how you take advantage of this surge. The people, I, they, they, go back to what I said in the very beginning, 95% or more of the people you talk to aren't going to do a deal this year. But those are the people. I built my entire career on people that did not want to buy or sell. Why? Because I made friends with them stayed in touch with them through the email. And then they called me in two years, five years, seven years to do all this business and refer all this business to me. That's how you build. And so the, the opportunity right now is no different than it ever is. There's really no difference in what, what you do. You pay attention to the market. You, you stick and move. You, you understand, okay, we may take a little hit. So when you have a massive business, and we take a re retraction of transactions like we've seen, you can take a 10, 20, 30% hit on your business. Say you're making a mil, now you're making 800. Okay. But going all in when that retraction happens to expand your influence, when the market resurges, that million that you were making now looks like 1.3 million after a couple of years and letting your business mature. See that... We, we all want business now. We all are impatient. We want to make a million, but we want to have a million dollar a year business, you know, the next year or whatever, but it takes time for your business to mature. It's like, it's like, uh, being a teenager. Okay. When you're 11, you're like, I want to be an adult. I, I, I know I, I was like, I'm, I want to, I'm ready to be an adult. I'm 11. Well, next year you're still a teenager. <laughs> it takes time to mature to the point that you're an adult, same thing with your business. So the opportunity is mass communication one-on-one -on because -one, the only thing between you and a million dollars a year, the only thing between you and a million dollars a year are thousands and thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in your market. Now, what are you doing to have these thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in the market over the next couple of years? Are you going to drag those thousands of conversations over the course of 20 years? Not me. I'm going to squeeze those thousand conversations into a couple of years so I can get to the million as quick as I can so I can move on to bigger and better things. Like having a residual business because so many people know who I am and they just call me and I do two deals a week just off doing a weekly email and I can spend the time I used to prospect building other businesses and take the money I'm making and invest in passive income like rental properties so that one day, one day I don't have to sell because I have to. I sell because I want to. And then eventually I can just say, I don't feel like selling anymore. I feel like Absolutely. a high school football coach and we're about to go out for uh, 
Yeah. Thank you, Ricky. So um, looking forward, if you're speaking about looking forward to the next couple of years, I, I know there was some conversation in our office and a lot of the offices about uh, the two lawsuits that are going on, the buyer's broker, the, the buyer's agent commission. Nothing's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. Do your research. All right. Look at the the settlement that Remax just did. Okay. Read through the, the business policy changes that they made. There's eight of them. What do six of them say in the very first few words of, of their of, of those eight? Six of them say what? It says Remax will continue to. Six of the eight say Remax will continue to blah blah blah. Which means what? They're already doing the stuff that they're saying that they're gonna do. They're gonna continue to do it, which means what? Nothing's going to change. The two that don't say continue, say we're going to create more educational material to abide by transparency to buyers and sellers about commissions and blah, blah, blah. And the eighth one is, is we're not going to require anybody, any REMAX brokers or agents to be a member of NAR like we have been. Outside of that, all the different policy changes and business changes they made where we'll continue to, which means we've already been doing all this, which means nothing is going to change. Now, if you talk to real estate agents about this lawsuit and you ask them about it, ask them about the details, what do they say? I don't know what's going on, right? Agents don't even know what this is about. Now, do you think that the general public knows what this lawsuit is about or even has heard of this lawsuit? We've heard of it because it's a buzzword in the real estate agent community, yet agents don't even really understand it. If you're outside of the real estate agent community, you definitely don't know what's going on, which means when you go to a listing appointment or you're showing a buyer a property, they don't know about this crazy thing going on. We're, we're creating fear around it when nothing, I repeat, nothing is going to change. Now, let's just say there's a 1% chance something could change. I can't even figure out, I can't even, I can't even fathom what world something would change and what that change would be. Okay. What? There's no buyer agents. Buyers have to pay their own uh, commissions, uh, yada, yada, yada. I can't even like imagine how that all would even come to be based on what I'm seeing. Even if it was, let's just take Australia, for example. That's what, that's how they operate. No, no buyer up uh, that buyers pay their own agents if they want a buyer agent. Otherwise they go through the listing agent. Guess what? The listing agent gets 3%. And the buyers come to them and they basically handle both sides for 3%. If that's the world that we wake up to tomorrow, then bring it on. Let me go out here. I'm going to show you how to go out here and list 100 properties. I'm going to sell them all for 3%, represent both sides. If that's what I'm working with, then let me go crush it. I'm not going to sit around worried about this. But, but anyway, nothing's going to change, in my opinion. I mean, even the Anywhere settlement, um, same stuff. We're going to continue to do what we've been doing. Okay. What are you changing? Nothing. We're just not going to make it to where our brokers and agents mandatorily have to be members of NAR. Doesn't change anything with the way that we operate in terms of representing buyers and sellers. Right. Yeah. I saw that uh, Redfin uh, is not going to continue being a member. Is that correct? Redfin, yeah. Redfin well, well, the thing is, is they have to continue to be members in certain cities and areas where you have to, if you're not a member, you don't get access to MLS. So they can't erase membership of their entire company. They're going to erase membership of the entire company where they're not in areas where you have to be a part of NAR to have access to local MLS and be a part of the state and local boards. Um, but yeah, they step down from the board. They said, we're distancing ourselves, whatever. And then the next day, NAR came out and said, we're going to go from one penny. You have to offer at least one penny as a buyer agent fee commission. We're going to go from that to zero, which that was one of Redfin's complaints because they offer, they advertise for sale by owners on redfin.com. And that's kind of against the NAR policies because, you know, there's a lot of those. There's no buyer agent, you know, fees. Um and then the next day, they <laughs> NAR comes out and says, okay, you can offer zero, which 
Could it have something to do with Redfin or it could have something to do with the lawsuit where NAR is trying to position themselves as, hey, this is we're already changing policies. It's like they're already trying to conform, you know, to to the lawsuit and everything, because NAR says they're going to fight it to the end. You know, it's wild. As far as as far as agents are concerned, who cares? What's your job? Your job is to go help buyers and sellers connect buyers and sellers continue to do your job who cares and a lot of you on that note are only doing half your job you're finding a buyer and then you're waiting on another agent to list the property and put it on mls you're just watching mls every day looking for a property why aren't you talking to sellers who own the type of property your buyer might want and find them a seller you're not doing your job same thing with listings. We get a listing, put on MLS, and wait on the buyer to come through, through another agent. Why are you not trying to find a buyer for the listing? You're doing half the job. Now, there's dual purpose there because if you have a listing and you call the neighborhood with the of the, the, the same listing, saying, hey, I got a listing, you know, do you want, you know, to pick your neighbors? You're you're not only possibly going to sell the listing, maybe, maybe not, but you're building more relationships. So you got two reasons of doing that. When you have a buyer and you're calling in subdivisions to find a, a seller for that buyer, you may not may or may not find the house for that buyer, but look at all the relationships you built. Those seeds that you're sowing are worth millions to you guys over the next 20 years. But you're not doing it. You're sitting on the couch waiting on other agents to do it. I've heard of, um, I've heard of uh, agents literally taking... Uh, a buyer's contract that didn't get accepted uh, to the doors of of neighbors and uh, you know, showing them that they have a qualified buyer and seeing if they want to sell. I've heard of something as aggressive as that as that door knocking with with your 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 buyer's offer. Obviously, a good offer, a qualified offer. So I, I don't know if that's as aggressive as you you would uh, you would um, recommend, but I've heard of that strategy. Listen, here's the thing about what I recommend and stuff. I, I There's not one single strategy, not one single strategy that I've heard that someone hasn't went out there and built a million dollar a year business on. You know, high pressure, cold calling, low pressure, cold calling, door knocking, or door knocking with an offer, social media for sale by owners, expireds, old expireds, new expireds, sphere of influence, direct mail, on, and all the different you know, ways to do everything I just said. Every single thing works. The problem mm -hmm. is, is that a lot of you guys are doing like eight different lead gen activities. At, you know, at the end of the day, after, after a, a top producer's career and you say, how'd you do it? You know, how did you generate all these leads? What was your bread and butter? Right. How many lead gen sources do they normally say? What's that? Two, be, two maybe three. Two, maybe three. Two lead. Most two of the time it's sources. one. They might have dabbled around with another one. But they nor there was normally one that was their real like the backbone of their entire lead gen business. Like for me. I could say direct mail and, um, you know, stuff like that, but really circle prospecting was just, that was it. That's, that's how I built my entire business. Um, my point is this, when you're trying to do eight things, nine things, 10 things, you know, you're doing all these different things. The reason you're doing all those things is because you've got your bread and butter, one or two legion activities, but you're scared of all the business you're going to lose by not doing these other seven. And so you do the other seven because you're scared of you, you know, you're, you're losing business there, but the real, the people that really excel, they're okay. Sacrificing the business that they might lose in these other activities to go all in on the two that are really just working fantastic for them. And, um, I, I I was naturally somehow really good at this because Zillow came along and I tested everything. When first, as soon as Zillow came along, I bought it. I spent like 20 grand the first year and it was horrible. It's still horrible. Now I know people that make millions on Zillow, right? 
not everything works for everybody. Some people make things, you know, everything works. But for me, it was horrible because I'm like, oh, I'm spending like thousands when I could just call property owners for a penny. What am I doing? Um. So there was that. There was social media. There was there's all kinds of lead gen things. There's all these stuff that came along while my career was like, you know, growing. Um, and. But I, I was really good at just focusing on what worked weekly email direct mail and circle prospecting. That was kind of just my bread and butter. Um, I just did a, uh, a 30 listing challenge. I don't know if you guys saw that. How many guys saw that? Just a couple of you. Oh my gosh. Let me grab this and um, put it. I got a replay of this 30 listings by the end of the year. I laid out exactly. Even if you don't, even if you're like, Oh my God, 30 listings, no way. There's no way I've gotten two listings all year. When you see this, it's going to go from there's no way to I think I can actually do this. I just put a link right there in the chat if you want to grab that and give it to the group. When you watch it, you're at the end of it, you're, you're going to say to yourself, I believe I'm going to get 30 listings by the end of the year. And that's what you need to do, because this is a three month flag business. OK, we're in 2024 already for agents. But we slack off and we don't really get go until January 1st. You know, that's when we get excited about our business and get back in the game. Well, you're not really going to reap the benefits. You're not really going to, you know, harvest the those seeds of January till March, April, right? The bulk of that, that work. So if you want a great 2024, you don't need from April to December to be great. You need from January to December to be great. How do you do that? Well, you got to start right now. If you could build inventory of 10, 20, 30 listings by the end of the year, you're in the driver's seat moving into the ne next year and you have time to do it right now. Why? Because the market is slower. We're, we're in the fall, which is always slower, of a 10-year down, down cycle, L you know, lowest transaction since 2008. We're, we're in a double whammy right now. This is the perfect time to build your inventory and go into 2024 on fire. What was the question? <laughs> yeah anybody have any questions yeah i, I mean i don't want to Andy, go ahead. Hey, no, listen, go ahead, go ahead. um ricky can you talk about um because you're, the, the volume of deals that you're talking about doing um in my experience takes um it takes that it takes the ability to develop a certain routine can you talk about time blocking routines morning rituals and things that you've done to position yourself to grab a large number of listings <laughs> Well, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here um, because it's real, just simple stuff. So I, I think the best perfect day for an agent is to get up and do whatever you do, you know, work out, eat and whatever you do. And when you get to where you're sitting down working, you know, go through your, it takes 15 minutes to go through your email and text message and all that. And on literally a sheet of paper, write down everything you have going on for the day, schedule, hot leads, listings you're going after, where you need to be, when you need to be there. Take 15 minutes to, to map everything out, all right? So let's say you start at 8, 8.15, you're done with that. 8.15 to 8.30, study your MLS hot sheet. New listings, close deals, expireds, pendings, whatever, all that stuff, scan through it every day, scan through the new listings. You become a market expert overnight and you'll see properties that, that spark ideas to call clients. You know, you see something come up in a neighborhood, you sold something in or, you know, something a buyer looks like something a buyer is looking for, whatever. But you also become a market expert. You don't even realize it. This is your job, guys, is to stay on top of the market. Look at that hot sheet every day, 10, 15 minutes, 8.30 to 9. Who are we calling? Why? Get the data. Everything you need. Nine o'clock dialing. Call Facebook leads. Call Zillow leads. Cold call. Expired. Sphere of influence. Uh, I don't care who you call, but if you're not calling, this is where agents run into trouble. They'll message me. Oh, you know, I've only had a couple closings. It's not really working for me. You know, what should I do? I'm doing social media. I got seven deals off Instagram this year. You know, what do I do to ramp it up? I'm like, how many calls are you making? None. 
Well, how do you expect to sell properties if you're not talking to people? The whole premise, the whole, this entire career is predicated on you talking to people you do and don't know, mostly that you don't know, to help them buy and sell real estate. That's your job, right? It, uh, my, my second broker, he said, if you treat real estate like a job, it'll be the best paying job you ever had. What did he mean? He means if you put the hours into real estate, clock in, clock out, like you do a job and work the whole time, no breaks, it'll be the best paying job you ever had. He was right. But I think you should make calls from nine to 12. All right. Um, take your lunch. And then all afternoon, all afternoon marketing, create great videos. You should be doing a video a day, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, a video a day. One minute video, whatever. Uh, and then what do you do? How do you capitalize there? Well, when you when you when you post videos every day, it builds engagement on your profile. If you're doing one a week and you look at your profile impressions for the month, it's really low. If you do a video every day, even if you're only getting 200 views on a video, that 200 views adds up over 30 videos, right? So now your your impressions look look pretty big, even though your views aren't great. Your impressions look impressive. Now, what do you do with that? You you take it to the next listing appointment and impress your seller. Hey, I'm getting this many impressions per month on my social. I'm going to be pushing your property on my social platforms. And they're like, oh, wow, any agent can put my property on MLS, but you're going to be put on MLS and pushing it on your platform where you're getting 12,000 impressions a month. I'm going with you. That's how you utilize social media, ladies and gentlemen. And then you create a great listing video for that listing. And um, try to attract a buyer to it. Again, trying to do your job, 100% of your job, which is find the buyer for the listing. Um, and then do, you know, try to set your appointments later in the day from like three to five or three to six or whatever, if you possibly can. It's not rocket science, guys. Yeah, that's real. That's good. Um, can you talk a little bit in the last couple of minutes before your heart stopped about uh, call reluctancy and, uh, you know, agents who have, have not you know, made calls at that, at that, you know, three hour per clip and, um, you know, how, how you've coached your, your agents in the past to, to, uh, you know, to jump in what? at first and, you know, to stay consistent is really the, I guess the key. Yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of tough love. Ooh, it's kind of tough love. Um, you know, with that, because for, for me, I, okay. I empathize with the fear of it. I do not understand and do not relate to letting that fear uh, prevent you from having the most successful career you can have as quickly as you can. I empathize with having the fear because I had it. I do not relate to allowing that to put you in a position where you're going home to your family and looking your kids in the eyes, knowing that you didn't do all you could do to succeed at the highest level for them. That's, that's tough love. So, um, the question is, there's two questions. One, what are you scared of? Okay. Um, then the second question is, what else are you going to do? Sit there? So that's my two questions. What are you scared of? And what else is there to do? Is there, some, is there, is there another activity <laughs> that I'm missing here that I need to be doing? Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't found it yet. So maybe I could ask somebody who's scared. What are you scared of? Anybody scared to make calls? So I think I, I think as a whole, just you know, just some you know, mentoring younger younger agents in the in the industry. I think it's obviously you know, fear of rejection. We know that. Also, maybe um, you know, not not being totally prepared and, and having um, you know enough enough market um, research and enough um, enough data to give to these uh, to these you know, potential sellers or potential buyers. I think really just the preparation right. of it. Yeah. Preparing, so. I think, yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. That's my so, guess. Yeah. The the rejection, okay? What's so bad about that again? Exactly. Um, not knowing everything. What else do you need to know? You're trying to help people buy and sell real estate. You don't need to know anything. Hey, Mr. Property Owner, are you looking to buy or sell something? Are you already working with an agent? Tell me what you're looking to do so that I can help you do it. What do you need to know? You need to stand by you need you need to stand behind your intentions to help people. Not not let the fears of not knowing something that they're probably not going to ask you 
but stand behind your intentions that you're there to help someone. The confidence needs to come from how badly you want to help people. You ask me a question I don't know, let me go find the answer. You don't want to work with me because I'm new? Great. I'll go find somebody who does want a hard worker. How many properties have you sold? None, Mr. Seller, and that's why you want me. Why is that? Because I'm going to work on your deal eight hours a day. If you want Mr. 100 deal a year, Ricky, go down to his office, look at him in the eyes and say, hey, where's my deal going to be on your priority list? It's not going to be number one. For me, it's going to be number one. I'm going to spend eight hours a day making sure that it goes smooth. And guess what? I got backup. I got other agents helping me making sure this thing goes through. I'm not going to let this thing, uh, you know, I'm going to make sure this is a very smooth transaction for you. Listen, you're young. You're like, people aren't going to work with me. I'm young. Guess what? There's old people in the room that are saying, I'm too old. People don't want to work with me because I'm too old. They're going to want to work with somebody younger. So where does it end, ladies and gentlemen? Now we're going to go out here and we're going to beat, you know, Kelly High. We're gonna get, put it in here. Let's <laughs> go one, two, three, team. <laughs> Yeah, that's the truth, Ricky. That's the truth. No. Any other questions, gentlemen? No, Ricky. Ricky, thank thank you so much. Um, I think what I'm seeing and I'm hearing from you is there's a driving force behind the reason why you're willing to do the things that's necessary to be successful when you were an agent. And I think one of the things that we have a challenge with in the industry from a management standpoint is helping agents tap into that driving force and that why, and just constantly keeping that in front of them as a reminder to do the things that are hard so that life can be easy for them once they get to the point they're trying to reach. And so I'm seeing that from you, and I just want to um, thank you for helping that, echoing what we coach and train and just share as a sentiment across the, the brokerage and across the industry with the agents. It's apparent to me when I'm listening to you speak. Yeah, you just have to keep going. It just doesn't happen overnight. You just got to keep, you just got to visualize that three to five year outcome and um, and keep pushing. It just, it's not going to happen quickly. I'm sorry. It's just not. So if you can get past that and, and, and you know, realize on the other side of that is I'm just going to have to work my ass off basically for free for a while to get this thing going. Most businesses lose money, guys, in the first couple of years. You own your own business. Most businesses lose money in the first couple of years. This is an opportunity for you to own your own business that doesn't lose money. <laughs> you might lose money the first year, you know, if it had a little rocky start. But, man, the money you did lose is nothing compared to what a lot of businesses lose in the first year. This is a massive opportunity. And it's not for everybody. You know, I can go on record and say that. 90% of agents fail. It's not for everyone. It's tough. But, damn, is it worth it. Yeah. Amen. No, thank you for that. Thank you, Ricky. Okay, guys. See you guys. Enjoy. Um, did you guys grab the YouTube link? Yeah, we have it. Yeah, we're cool. gonna set everything out. Uh, uh, you can email that to me also. I'm I'm gonna send it out. I'll put it on our Facebook private page. I'll get it out to everyone who's in attendance, and uh, we'll get. I I am I am doing a just a just a group training public coaching call uh tomorrow at 4 p.m eastern all right the zoom link for that is joinricky.com 4 p.m eastern tomorrow thank you thanks ricky cool. thank you. see you guys you.